Buckle up because today I have a story for you that'll have you both laughing and groaning in equal measure. This is one of those experiences you don't forget, no matter how hard you try. Welcome back to Park and Post. So, picture this. I'm on a long-haul flight, you know, one of those eight-hour cross-ocean journeys. I'm all set with my neck pillow, snacks, noise-canceling headphones, ready to knock out a few episodes of my favorite series and maybe, just maybe, catch some sleep. But the universe had other plans for me that day. Right across the aisle, there's a young mother and her child, a toddler, maybe two years old, cute kid at first. But within 20 minutes of takeoff, that cute turned into chaotic. The crying started and, trust me, it was loud. Like, soul-piercing loud. I'm thinking, okay, kids cry. No big deal. She'll comfort him, he'll settle down. But, nope. This wasn't a five-minute meltdown. This wasn't a 30-minute tantrum. This went on for eight hours. Eight hours. Here's where the story really takes an unexpected turn. It wasn't the crying that surprised me. That part was almost expected on a flight with a toddler. What truly left me stunned was the mother's complete indifference to the situation. The baby was wailing at a decibel level that could probably shatter glass, and yet this woman sat there, utterly unbothered, flipping through her magazine like she was lounging by the pool. No attempts to comfort her child, no apologies to the surrounding passengers, not even a sigh of frustration. It was as if the crying didn't exist in her world, like the child was just background noise in her serene bubble. At first, I thought maybe she was just overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. You know, sometimes parents freeze up in stressful situations, and I was ready to give her the benefit of the doubt. But as the minutes turned into hours and the crying continued, it became clear this was no temporary shock. She was genuinely unfazed, as though eight hours of continuous crying was the soundtrack of her life and she had grown immune to it. Meanwhile, the rest of us were slowly unraveling. I saw passengers exchange incredulous looks, their eyes screaming. Is she for real? The flight attendants weren't oblivious either. A couple of them approached her, offering assistance. I thought maybe they'd suggest calming techniques or at least offer her some sort of miracle remedy. But no, she waved them off with a smile as if declining a second round of complimentary drinks, like this wasn't an all-out airborne crisis. It was the kind of polite refusal that would have made you think everything was perfectly normal, except for the ear-splitting noise engulfing the entire cabin. At one point, I swear I saw one of the flight attendants give the mother a look that said, Lady, we're in this together. But apparently, we weren't. What threw me the most was how, as the hours dragged on, the passengers around us began to unite in our shared misery. It became an unspoken bond of suffering one that you could only understand if you were there. The guy next to me leaned over and said, if we make it through this, we deserve some kind of reward, right? People were cracking jokes, trying to keep the mood light because what else could we do? By six hours into the flight, I had gone from frustration to disbelief and finally to an odd sort of admiration for this mother's zen-like composure. She had somehow managed to stay completely calm while the rest of us were losing our minds. As the crying persisted and it became clear we were all stuck in this airborne nightmare together, something remarkable started to happen. The initial frustration among the passengers began to morph into a kind of collective resignation, and with that came humor, the best coping mechanism we had left. It was like we were all in on the same terrible joke one where the punchline was eight hours of ear-splitting crying, a man a few rows back with dark circles already forming under his eyes turned to his seatmate and deadpanned. I think this baby's going for a world record. The laugh that followed was more of a groan, but it was enough to break the tension for a moment. The passengers were trying everything to lighten the mood. At one point, a woman across the aisle pulled out a stash of snacks, mini cookies, crackers, and a chocolate bar and held them up like an offering to the crying toddler. Maybe this will help? She said, with a half-joking, half-desperate smile. We all chuckled, even though deep down we knew no amount of sugar could soothe the poor child. Still, the act of trying to contribute in some small way became a kind of inside joke that we all appreciated. 
A man in the back even suggested we take turns singing lullabies, which earned a wave of sarcastic applause from the other passengers. We all knew it wouldn't work, but the humor of the idea made us feel just a little bit more human. It was funny, too, how people started to form little alliances during this ordeal. The guy sitting next to me, who I hadn't exchanged more than a glance with at the beginning of the flight, became my flight buddy. We began trading exaggerated sighs every time the baby hit a new, impossibly loud octave. And by the third hour, we were doing a silent countdown to the end of the flight, pointing at our watches and shaking our heads with a smile. A few people even started joking about forming a support group once we landed. Survivors of Flight 302, The Crying Chronicles. And honestly, it didn't sound like a bad idea, but what stood out the most was how, despite the chaos, this shared suffering seemed to bond us as a community. It was like a strange sort of team-building exercise, where instead of ropes courses and trust falls, we had a crying toddler to navigate. In a weird way, the mother's total indifference forced the rest of us to come together. We became this odd little tribe of passengers united by our mutual misery, but also by our ability to laugh at the absurdity of it all. By the time we landed, it felt like we'd all been through something big together, something almost cathartic. And as we filed off the plane, many of us exchanged knowing smiles, a kind of silent acknowledgement that, despite everything, we had made it through, together. Before we move on, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of our latest travel tips and share this information with your friends and family. And don't forget to join our free newsletter and become a friend of Park and Post. By signing up, you'll receive exclusive offers and updates. Click the link below to join our newsletter and start enjoying the benefits today. But let's get back to the topic. Eight hours of torture crying child, and the mother who didn't care. If there was one overarching takeaway from this ordeal, it was a deep, unshakable lesson in patience. Sitting through eight hours of a child's unrelenting cries on a packed flight tests the limits of your nerves in ways you wouldn't imagine. But surprisingly, once you've hit that breaking point where you think you can't possibly tolerate another second, something shifts. You realize you have no control over the situation and the only option left is to let go. Patience, in this context, isn't just about tolerating discomfort. It's about accepting it and finding peace despite the chaos swirling around you. For me, that shift from frustration to acceptance was oddly freeing. I stopped focusing on the noise, stopped hoping it would magically end, and instead started focusing on surviving the experience with humor and grace. That lesson in patience extends beyond just handling noisy flights. It's a reminder that in travel and in life, things don't always go as planned. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations that are entirely out of our control. Whether it's a delayed flight, lost luggage, or yes, a crying baby, how we respond is more important than the situation itself. We can either stew in frustration or find ways to adapt. The passengers on that flight, myself included, Learn to adapt by finding humor in the misery, by banding together, and by accepting that no amount of sighing or eye-rolling was going to change the outcome. Patience became the key to our collective sanity. Of course, patience can only go so far, and there are definitely practical solutions we can all adopt when faced with these situations. For parents traveling with young children, a little preparation can go a long way. Bringing snacks, toys, books, and a tablet with headphones can help distract and soothe a child. Engaging them before a meltdown starts is often the best way to avoid one altogether. As a parent, acknowledging the stress it might cause to others and making a visible effort to calm your child can earn you some much-needed grace from fellow passengers. It's about showing that you're trying, even if the results aren't perfect. As passengers, most of us are willing to give parents a break. What frustrates us is when there seems to be no effort at all. For the rest of us, especially when faced with an unavoidable crying baby, it's all about being proactive. Noise-canceling headphones are an absolute game-changer and should be at the top of every traveler's packing list. If you know you're sensitive to noise or easily irritated, take responsibility for your own comfort by bringing earplugs, downloading relaxing music or podcasts, or even packing a good book to distract yourself, and most importantly, 
Remember that no one, parent, or passenger is enjoying the crying. We're all in the same boat, or rather, the same plane. Offering a kind smile, a joke, or even a helping hand might not stop the noise, but it can make the experience a little more bearable for everyone involved. Ultimately, the lesson here is about empathy, patience, and finding ways to survive the unpredictable nature of travel with a little more understanding. And that, my fellow travelers, was the unforgettable flight from hell. Sometimes, travel throws us into the most unexpected situations, and all we can do is learn from it, laugh, bond with fellow passengers, and maybe pack better noise-canceling headphones next time. So, what's your craziest flight story? Drop it in the comments below, because I know I can't be the only one who's lived through this kind of madness. If you enjoyed this wild tale, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you won't miss out on more travel stories, tips, and tricks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, safe and hopefully quieter travels.